Hello, Dominic from BMT Spain, website for beginners to advanced players. And this video is about the forehand consciously turning the racket against the ball or playing the ball consciously out of your hand. Now, first I have to tell you two things. The hand can do radial to ulnar deviation or ulnar to radial deviation and extension and flexion or flexion and extension. These are the two things the hand can do. Now, point two is in our stroke, we have the hand, we have the underarm, and we have the shoulder. The underarm can do pronation and supination, and the shoulder can do internal and external shoulder rotation, and the hand I already explained. Now, why is this important? Because the hand cannot turn. If I block my arm, my hand cannot turn. The turn here comes out of the underarm, or the turn here can come out of my shoulder. Why is this important? Well, when we talk about turning the racket out of the hand consciously, yeah, the racket will never close. You will see a lot of players and they make a mistake and they're already closed. Well, they started too early to use the arm and they didn't finish what I called, yeah, turning consciously the racket against the ball, the flexion motion. If you flexion, only flexion, the racket will never close. It doesn't matter if you have a low contact, if you have a mid-high contact or if you have a high contact, your arm will not turn, will not pronate unless you pronate. So we have to become conscious of what it is turning the racket against the ball, no matter on what heights you want to play that ball. Now, what do we do to become more conscious about turning the racket against the ball? We start with shadow tennis. And in that shadow tennis, I have four points I work on. I will put four balls on the ground to give you a better idea where to stop and where to turn. And from there on, we will continue. Now, one foot behind that ball, one foot behind that ball. We are pointing to play over there. And the first step is the first ball. We will come from here because we will turn the racket later on. We are coming down. We are stopping behind the first ball. And from here, we will turn the racket. Yeah? We will flex it in the front. So we will stop and turn, but we let the racket go. We stop and turn so that we stop so that we can feel that we start to turn the racket to the front out of our hand. So stop and turn. We do that five, six or seven times how you feel. Once you have done it five, six times, you try to do that fluently. So try to focus on the moment of turning. So the moment you come here, you start to turn the racket and let the racket go and you will see that little by little the shoulder will follow because I'm hitting the ball later there is no body motion here yeah I also use these four balls to show you the evolution on how the body works in this stroke once you have done this we go to the second ball we stop and you can see that the shoulder because the contact becomes more and more to the front starts already to turn a little bit not because I turn it, but because my body will follow my hand. And again, flexion or turn the racket and let it go. And you will see, once I get more here, the shoulder will turn more, the hip will come loose, the foot comes off the ground. And again, fluently focus on turning the racket. Turning the racket. Turning the racket. Five, six times, you go to the third ball, the front foot. So you stop here. And now you can see that the shoulder is already 45 degrees turn and the hip starts to come loose. Yeah. So from here, flexion. Also, try to keep the racket head as long as possible pointed to the back and turn. Again, five, six, seven times. Once you have done that, fluent. Focus on the moment of turning. Turn. Yeah. Turn. I'm not finishing now. I'm just turning. Yeah. Up. And as you can see, the body starts to follow, the shoulder follows, the hip follows, the foot comes up. You go to the front, and here you will see the difference with the back foot. Once I'm in the front, watch how far my shoulder is turned, my hip is turning, and my right foot is coming off the ground. So my body is following my hand. If my body won't follow, I cannot even go to that point. So this is the idea that the body follows the hand. So I go here, I stop, and I consciously Turn the racket out of my hand to the front. You can start slow, 
and little by little you can have more acceleration out of that hand and then again fluently pop. now I finish pop. and as you can see when I'm finished I'm also with my shoulders and my hips turn to the front of the court so my body will turn but it will turn later this is the difference with the professional stroke if you watch Alcaraz Djokovic what you will see there is they have what they call the fire the hip the hip goes the shoulder goes the arm goes and then the hand or the racket goes now at BMT the hand goes the arm follows the shoulder follows and the hip follows so you have the opposite now the reason for that is that I want you first to learn control the body I can play the stroke like this and I can also play the stroke like that because I have control over my body. Now for beginners, intermediate players until advanced, yeah, I recommend you to do this because it's also a natural way. Let's say I want to grab my racket and my hand is here. What will I do? I will go to my racket. I didn't do this to grab my racket. Yeah? I just go with my hand and as you can see, the shoulder starts to follow and the hip starts to follow. If I would not go with my shoulder and my hip, I would not be able to catch my racket, so my shoulder follows and my hip follows. Another way to see this is, let's say you have a weight here, or I think just a tennis ball, and you would drop this, my body is not turning, but once I go here, my body starts to follow. So this way is actually a very natural way to learn to play. And for that, I'm saying first the hand, then the arm, then the shoulder, then the hip or like I always say, the hands guiding, the body follows the hands. Once you have control over that, we can go to the next step, which is more the advanced level, competition level. But I recommend you to practice a little bit these steps so you can feel yeah, that you're literally playing the ball out of your hand consciously. The ball will come and you will turn the racket. Another advantage of this is that, let's say if you're a little late, the ball comes, and you're a little late here, you can still play the ball. If you have to do this and the ball is here, you have to push here and it will feel very awkward. So you will have a lot of advantages with this system until you're advanced and you want more explosive power, then you can start yeah, to use more your body. But until then, I recommend you to do the BMT steps. You will feel very good with that. But for now, let's go to the next step, which will be the mini tennis showing you again step for step how we work on that so this is the part where we start in mini tennis yeah we start with the racket point tipping in the back and we're just going to turn the racket consciously against the ball without finish so let's check it out so i'm just going to turn the racket against the ball that's all racket tip is in the back turn the racket against the ball and see how much power I already exaggerated yeah so we do a few balls like this even when I was closer I could still play that ball out of my hand so two more balls here I just turn that racket against the ball so I go with my hand to the front and here I turn it once you have done that second step is we start to move to the right a little bit to the left a little bit in the back and just let the ball come and turn the racket against the ball so we go this way and we turn the racket now we go and we go and we wait and we turn the racket against the ball we go in the back or to the right this one and we turn the racket consciously against the ball so i'm waiting and i'm turning the racket now if it's deeper i have to go back i have to go back but i just turn the racket against the ball so i go back and i turn the racket against the ball one more left and one more right so here we go wait for the ball Turn the racket consciously out of your hand against the ball. Now, once you have done that, the next step. We do the same, but we finish now. So we start to relax more. Once you have done that flexion, we relax and we let the racket go. If you flex it in the right way, the racket will always go in your neck or over your shoulder, like this. So I'm waiting here. Now I'm going to flex it and finish. I'm going. Wait for the ball, I flex it and I finish. So as you can see here, the racket will never close 
because I'm focused on this part here as to the arm, so I was not playing with my hand. I used the arm too early. So that's why focus on turning the racket against the ball. Once you have turned the racket against the ball, let the racket go and you will see that every ball, no matter how low, if you flex in, the ball will go up. Then again, you start to run. You start to learn to find the ball, flex in and finish. You go to the left, up, flex in and finish. You go to the right, flex in and finish. You go to the left, flex in and finish. You can also do it more in the back. So you go backwards and flex in and finish. You go back, waiting, flex in and finish. So these are the first two steps. The third step is where timing and rhythm comes. But if you watch the other videos from BMT, you will see that I talk about bounce and turn, flexion and finish. So now we do the same, still in mini tennis, but I will wait for the bounce. I will turn my racket. I will go with my hand towards the ball. And when I arrive there, I will flex it. So we do the same, bounce and turn, flexing and finish. Bounce and turn, flexing and finish. Watch how I turn the racket out of my hand. So bounce and turn, flexing and finish. And then again here, we do the same. You can start to learn to find the ball, get your hands to the ball. So here, bounce and turn, flexing and finish. Bounce and turn. Watch how slow I turn my racket. Why? Because the ball is slow. If the ball will be faster, yeah, which you can see when I'm going in the back, I will turn this faster. So I'll four more balls left, right, finding the ball, bounce and turn, flexing and finish. 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 So this is the part of the mini tennis. I will hit a few balls from the back. So now I'm in the back. I will first flex in against the ball and then I will flex in and finish. And then I will do bounce and turn the same exercise as we did in the mini tennis. So here I'm just flexing against the ball, flexing against the ball, flexing against the ball, flexing against the ball. You can do that as many times as you want. Then the next step is flexing and finish. So you go, flexing and finish. You find the ball, flexing and finish. Up. Watch how I turn that racket against the ball out of my hand. So the focus is on turning that racket against the ball out of your hand, not out of your body. So, and once we have that, bounce and turn, flexing and finish. Bounce and turn, flexing and finish. Now, bounce and turn, flexing and finish. This was a slow ball. He will give me now two, three faster balls, and you will see that this racket will go fast. So here, bam, goes a little fast. Here, up, goes a little faster. So the turn, up, goes a little faster. So this is the steps how you should go and turn the racket consciously against the ball. Even if you have a higher contact, don't worry too much. Don't try to start to use your arm. Give me a higher ball. Yeah. So the higher contact you go and you flex it and you finish. That ball is in, it's at one meter of the baseline. So you go here, bounce and turn, flexing against that ball. Because the racket starts from lower, you will have more height and more spin, but you will not make mistakes. Because you're going up, you make more spin. Don't try to do this. What I see a lot is people go up and then they try to bring the racket down. Finish your flexion first like this. On the high ball, you go, finish your flexion first like this, and then you start to finish. And on the high contact also, if you do this right, you will see that also the racket will go in that way. A good flexion always finishes in the neck or over the shoulder. So, that was it, what I wanted to explain about consciously turning the racket against the ball, playing out of your hand, and thank you for watching. See you in the next video.